Denisovans, the mysterious archaic humans first identified in a cave in Siberia, also lived in Southeast Asia and Australia. We know that because indigenous Papuans and Australians carry their DNA, around 4% was bequeathed by a Denisovan ancestry. Since that discovery, the race has been on to find the actual remains of a Denisovan in this part of the world. Now archaeologists may have found them in the form of a 160,000 to 130,000 year old tooth unearthed from Cobra Cave, in the remote Anamite Mountains of northern Laos. Archaeologists have essentially found the smoking gun, this Denisovan tooth shows they were once present this far south, an incredibly exciting discovery. Our species, Homo sapiens, might be the only type of human knocking around the planet today, but we know quite a few branches of our family tree have at some point, called Southeast Asia home. We've got massive amounts of data for Homo erectus, and for Neanderthals, and for Homo sapiens. But the sample size for Denisovan teeth is the ones from the Tibetan mandible and the ones from Denisova cave. Denisovans are the only archaic humans ever to have been identified by DNA alone. The first clue came from a finger bone fragment, one of the middle bones of a pinky, found in a jumble of bone fragments in Denisova cave near the border of Siberia and China. The pinky bone looked like it came from a human. But its DNA showed that, while human-like, it was not from a modern human, or a Neanderthal but something quite distinct. So distinctive was the DNA, that geneticists could pick out traces of it in modern human populations. The DNA of Eurasians carried only 0.1%, but on the other side of the world, the DNA of indigenous Papuans and Australians carried 4%. The DNA story said the Denisovans most likely interbred with modern people somewhere in Southeast Asia. The Laos tooth, found in the tropics, showed how adaptable these ancient humans were. Incredibly, if you look at the time range of the Laos tooth, Denisovans were freezing in southern Siberia, they were adapting to high altitudes in Tibet, and they were living in balmy tropical caves of Laos all at the same time, but doing it 100,000 years earlier than modern humans were doing it. The only other Denisovan remains to date were identified in 2019, when an oversized human-like jaw with huge teeth, originally found by a meditating monk in a Tibetan cave, turned out to be Denisovan. The identification was made after researchers extracted collagen protein from the very large teeth, and found it was a match to that predicted by the Denisovan DNA sequence. Denisova cave later also yielded three large teeth. To find more Denisovan fossils, most pundits placed their bets on the islands that serve as stepping stones between the Asian mainland and Australia, Papua New Guinea. The Anamite Mountains of Laos were not on the radar of Denisovan hunters. But archaeologists had to answer a different question, how did modern humans travel from Africa through Asia? Laos turned out to be an important part of the route, in 2012 the Cave of Monkeys also known as Tam Pa Ling Cave, delivered the oldest remains of modern humans on mainland Southeast Asia, with one jaw dating to around 70,000 years ago. But adventurous climbers had also found another promising cave nearby, called the Cobra Cave, or Tam Gu Hao Tu. Unlike the Cave of Monkeys it was not habitable. But it served, as limestone caves do, as a trap for fossils swept from surrounding hillsides during floods. Inside, a cemented gravelly deposit turned out to be a treasure trove of fossilized bones, mostly teeth of giant herbivores such as ancient bison, elephants and rhinos. But amidst them was a prized gem, one archaic-looking human molar. Archaeology is plagued by arguments about dates so the researchers deployed independent approaches. They dated the cemented gravel deposit using infrared-stimulated luminescence dating, dated the flowstones above the gravel using a uranium series, and dated the animal teeth using a combined uranium series and electron spin resonance technique because the hominin tooth was too precious to drill into. Finally, scientists examined hair-thin slices of the cemented deposits under the microscope, to check the integrity of the structure. The forensic analyses all agreed, the layer was intact and had been deposited between 164,000 and 131,000 years ago. The minimum age for the tooth then, was 131,000 years old. Therefore, it did not belong to a modern human. Archaeologists were clued in on the age of the tooth's owner by its pristineness. It was an adult or permanent tooth, 
but had no signs of wear and tear, suggesting it hadn't yet grown through the gum and into the mouth when its owner died. In the absence of usable DNA, because the heat and humidity of the tropics degrades genetic material quickly, scientists analyzed more robust proteins in the tooth enamel to ascertain if it belonged to a boy or girl. So an expert at identifying hominin teeth was brought in to adjudicate. The method is akin to the time-honored approach of identifying species from the molar cusp pattern, but with a high-tech advance. Instead of scanning the outer cusps, which may be worn or broken, it uses a miniature CT scanner to look at the pristine pattern, just underneath the enamel layer, the so-called enamel dentine junction, or EDJ. The scientist has used his technique to look at diverse members of the Southeast Asian archaic human family, including Indonesian Homo erectus and the diminutive Homo luzonensis, found on the island of Luzon, in the Philippines, and Homo floresiensis, found on the Indonesian island of Flores. The analysis placed the enamel of the tooth closest to that of the Denisovan teeth found in the Tibetan cave and Denisova cave. Males produce a particular form of a protein that's involved in enamel production. The molar did not contain that protein type. This all pointed to a girl, who was between three and a half and eight and a half years old. But to close the case on whether or not she really was a tropical Denisovan, more of her kind will need to be found. But it's always dangerous to draw big conclusions from a solitary find like a tooth, but hominin fossils are so rare that every new specimen is important, especially in tropical Southeast Asia. Had the cave been in the Northern Hemisphere, the key suspect would be a Neanderthal, but their kind had never been found this far south. And the discovery of Homo floresiensis, also known as the Hobbit, also started with a single tooth. It was only years later that more of its skeleton came to light. One thing is for sure, the Southeast Asian fossil record has yielded all sorts of amazing surprises in recent decades, so who knows what else this team might unearth at the site. A team of researchers then produced physical reconstructions of Denisovans, based on patterns of chemical changes in their ancient DNA. In many ways, they resembled Neanderthals, but in some traits, they resembled Homo sapiens, and in others they were unique. The scientists first compared DNA chemical change patterns among the three human groups to find regions in the genome that were differentially methylated. Next, they looked for evidence of what those differences might mean for anatomical features, based on what's known about human disorders. By doing so, we can get a prediction as to what skeletal parts are affected by differential regulation of each gene, and in what direction that skeletal part would change. For example, a longer or shorter femur, or a wider or narrower jaw. To test this method, the team applied it to two species whose anatomy is known, the Neanderthal and the chimpanzee. They found that roughly 85% of their trait reconstructions were accurate in predicting which traits diverged, and in which direction they diverged. Then, they applied this method to the Denisovan and were able to produce the first reconstructed anatomical profile of the mysterious human cousins. The researchers identified. For example, the Denisovan skull was probably wider than that of modern humans or Neanderthals. They likely shared Neanderthal traits, such as an elongated face and a wide pelvis. One of the most exciting moments in the research happened when scientists discovered the Denisovan jawbone in Tibet. They quickly compared this bone to their predictions and found that the jawbone matched perfectly. Without even planning on it, researchers received independent confirmation of the ability to reconstruct whole anatomical profiles, using DNA that was extracted from a single fingertip. These findings show that DNA can be used to reconstruct anatomical features, including some that do not survive in the fossil record. This work is also a step towards being able to infer an ancient individual's anatomy, based on their DNA. Surprisingly, Denisovans also somehow managed to cross the so-called Wallace line after 600,000 years ago, and later interbred with anatomically modern Homo sapiens moving through the area on the way to Australia and New Guinea. Genetic evidence, pointing to their hybridization with modern human populations has been detected, but only in indigenous populations in Australia, New Guinea and surrounding areas. 
In contrast, Denisovan DNA appears to be non-existent or at very low levels in current populations on mainland Asia, even though this is where the Denisovan fossil was found. This pattern can only be explained if the Denisovans had succeeded in crossing Wallace's line, one of the world's biggest biogeographic barriers, which is formed by a powerful marine current along the east coast of Borneo. Wallace's line marks the division between Eurasian mammals to the west, from marsupial-dominated Australasia to the east. In mainland Asia, neither ancient human specimens, nor geographically isolated modern indigenous populations have Denisovan DNA of any note. This indicates that there has never been a genetic signal of Denisovan interbreeding in the area. The only place where such a genetic signal exists appears to be in areas east of Wallace's line, and that is where interbreeding took place, even though it means that the Denisovans must have made that marine crossing. This would throw out the idea that only modern humans had seafaring ability. The discovery of another enigmatic human species, Homo floresiensis, the so-called hobbits, confirms that the diversity of archaic human relatives in this area was much higher than previously thought. The morphology of the hobbits shows they are different from the Denisovans, meaning we now have at least two, and potentially more, unexpected groups in the region. Knowing that the Denisovans spread beyond this significant sea barrier opens up all sorts of questions about the behaviors and capabilities of this group, and how far they could have spread. The key questions now are where and when the ancestors of modern humans, who were on their way to colonize New Guinea and Australia around 50,000 years ago, met and the Denisovans. Intriguingly, the genetic data suggest that only male Denisovans interbred with modern human females, indicating the potential nature of the interactions, A small numbers of modern humans first crossed Wallace's line and entered Denisovan territory. What did you say? More recently, scientists have produced a world map of Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in 120 diverse modern populations. The analysis proposes that Denisovan admixture into humans occurred about 100 generations after Neanderthal admixture. Scientists collected their data by comparing known Neanderthal and Denisovan gene sequences across more than 250 genomes, from 120 non-African populations. The analysis was carried out by artificial intelligence, using a machine learning algorithm that could differentiate between parts of both kinds of ancestral DNA, which are more similar to one another than to modern humans. The results showed that individuals from Oceania possess the highest percentage of archaic ancestry, and South Asians possess more Denisovan ancestry than previously believed. This reveals previously unknown interbreeding events, particularly in relation to Denisovans. Oceania is a geographic region that includes Australasia, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Australasia is a region which comprises Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, and some neighboring islands. During the low sea levels of an ice age, Australia and New Guinea become one large landmass. Scientists have developed methods that can disambiguate the locations of segments of Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in present-day humans. They applied them to 257 genomes, from 120 diverse populations, among which were 20 individual Oceanians, with high Denisovan ancestry. In Oceanians, the average size of Denisovan fragments is larger than Neanderthal fragments, implying a more recent date of Denisovan admixture, in the history of these populations. Researchers documented more Denisovan ancestry in South Asia than expected, based on existing models of ancient human history, reflecting a previously undocumented mixture related to archaic humans. This map shows the proportion of the genome inferred to be Denisovan ancestry in non-Africans. The color scale is not linear, to allow saturation of the high Denisovan proportions in Oceania, shown in bright red, and better visualization of the Denisovan genome proportion in South Asia. Western Eurasians are the non-Africans least likely to have Neanderthal or Denisovan genes. Therefore, the interactions between modern humans and archaic humans are very complex, and perhaps involve multiple events. <laughs>